What's up, YouTube? It's OT with Tickaholics. Back at the game with another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing y'all a PS1 classic killer. So, let's get it in. Alright, so first things first is this is a Android box that I bought from Walmart. I only spent maybe about $67. If that, you know, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less really doesn't matter it's still a lot cheaper than the ps1 classic and you'll see why i actually like this a lot more than just going out and buying a whole new console because this you can run everything on it because like i said it's a android tv box so you can get everything that you want from your movies your videos and you don't have to take up a lot of space you know you don't have to do none of that so instead of adding an extra console to all the consoles that you already had like this you know what i'm saying you don't have to add something huge and bulky you know yeah they said that it's small but it's not in this form factor so look at how big that it is compared to my xbox one controller see it's actually a lot smaller than it if you can see that so let me bring y'all around the device real quick this is the front of it you get your led light then on the side you get your usb ports and you get your micro sd expansion on the back you actually get some pretty cool things i don't know if you can see it or not but uh, let me try to get it for you you get your hdmi your power and you also get an ethernet port so if you want to use that you can actually get you know a faster internet and a better stable connection and on the other side you don't get anything so let me show y'all why i say this is a ps1 killer all right so hopping on to my phone if y'all like my background, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I've been working on a lot of different things for my phone, you know, just testing out little odds and ends, but that ain't what this video is about. So let me go ahead and let me show y'all something real quick. If y'all see my last video or the video before this, which I'll put the link in the description and I'll put the, um, I'll put everything that you would need for that's in this video in the description as well. But if you seen my previous video about the uh, PlayStation 1 emulator, uh, this is actually a really good video to watch also, but if you want to check back at that one, you can go ahead and do that. Link will be in the description. So we'll go ahead and we'll look it up. Classic boy. Alright, so you see I have it installed. But one thing that's cool about this is that since that you have this emulator on your phone, you can actually transfer it to the PS or uh, not I'm sorry the Android device and as long as if you're signed into your account you can actually have all the features that you bought with this emulator so you can be able to save your games and everything like that so that's a really really cool feature to think about and I'm actually going to go ahead and show y'all guys how to send this over to the device so let's go ahead and let's get that in um, you got to make sure that on both of your devices, you actually have your, um, let me see. All right, there we go. You actually have both on the Android box and on your phone, you have ES File Explorer downloaded. So with that being said, let me go ahead and let me go into my ES File Explorer. Sorry about that. ES File. What you want to do is you want to locate the app. Normally it would be in your application settings, which would be on the home page. So you just scroll down so you can be able to find it, or you can use this up here to help look for it, which I would just use that, just so it's quick and easy. All right, so you got it right here. All right, so you wanna hold down on it, go to share, and whenever you're in this, you wanna go to, whoop, sorry. Go to share, go to send by land, send by land. We'll hide this and you see how it says jet stream right here. All right, so now we're gonna bounce over to my, um, we're gonna bounce over to the thing so y'all can be able to see. All right, so as you can tell, we're on it right now. You wanna go ahead and you wanna open up ES File Explorer on your device if you if you don't know how to install it I'll show y'all that right now so y'all want to go ahead and y'all want to open up the play button 
Okay, I want to open up the Play Store. Sorry. I meant press the play button because on the remote, you have a play button. I'm going to go to search. Go to ES. It should be the first one to pop up. And obviously I have it installed, so I'm just going to open it. And this is what it'll look like. Now on your phone, go back to ES File Explorer, go to Share, go to Send by LAN, Send by LAN, choose Jet Stream, go to Send, and then on the device, if we go back, you'll see that this will pop up. Just go to OK. You want to select your folder. I already have it in download. It'll look just like this, but I normally send it to my download folder. Go ahead and click OK. I'll just say OK because it's pretty much the same process. So whenever you do have your account attached to this device, I already have it, so it's not going to tell me right now or it won't show me what it looks like. But normally this is a free app, but since that I paid for it, obviously I get all the features of it. So that's like saving my games and pretty much like how a console would work. So that's a cool feature and something to think about. It's only about a couple bucks more. So obviously, would you rather spend a hundred something dollars or spend like 70 bucks on this? You know, I mean, come on. It's just, you know, it's right there. So another cool thing about this is not only do you get PlayStation games, you also get N64, you get GBA, you get Game Boy Color, you get NES, you get Sega, you get Neo Geo. So since that, the PlayStation 1 is only limited to PlayStation games and you only get 20 games on this, you can actually download any game that you want. And I actually have a couple of games downloaded on here, but I will show you all how you can send it over, how simple and easy that it is. And... Um, you could be able to do it with GBA games, with Game Boy Color, what, what, whatever it is. So this is why I think that this is a better option than the PlayStation 1 Classic. So as you can tell already, you know, you get your N64, your PlayStation 1, and all these other game systems. But since that this is not based around the N64 or GBA, it's only around the PlayStation 1, we're just going we're gonna to go ahead and we're going to focus on that right now. So... If you want to go ahead and if you want to send a game over, you pretty much do the same thing as what you did before on how you sent the um, the, app the application over from the device. You actually want to go to your ES File Explorer and you want to locate where your um, where your games are stored. In your case, they might be located in your downloads folder. In my case, they're actually download they're actually located in my my uh, my application on my phone so I'm just gonna look for that real quick should be classic boy which I think that I passed it yeah right here all right go to PlayStation go to ROMs Whoop. it's actually not in my ROMs hmm oh, okay I know I know where I put it I know where I put it okay so it's in my it's in my SD card I'm sorry about that so see how it says PS1 games I would actually suggest you to get a SD card and do this just so you're not running up too much space on your device and it'll actually keep it running smooth and all that stuff. So definitely something to think about and since that, that does have expandable memory it's easy just to pop your SD card into your phone, download your games, whatever ones that you want and then just pop it right back into your device and then you can be, you'll be able to find it by doing this method that I'm going to show you. All you want to do is click on it, I'll go to more, share, then you want to look for send by LAN. Send by LAN. Go to the jet stream. Go to send. And it'll send over. But since that I already have it sent over on my device, let me do it again because I didn't send it that time. Let me go ahead and let me go to send by LAN. I mean, do that. Okay, right here. You'll see that it popped up, you know, right there. Just gonna click OK, then click wherever you want it to go. Downloads in this case.
click OK, and then it'll start to send it over. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cancel this, you know, just for the sake of the video and then not sending over. But I'll show you all what it looks like whenever you have it installed. So you just want to go over to Classic Boy, open it up. You go down to whichever one that you want to play, the N64, PlayStation 1. Go to Select Game. And there they are right here. But if you sent it over to your Downloads folder, you would just go to a Parent Folder, a Parent Folder, then click it one last time, a Parent Folder, and then in the Selection, click it like three times. And in the Selection, you'll see Download or Classic Boy, whichever one that it saves to. You got to make sure that you know which one that it saves to. So in this case, you know, you would go to Download, and it should be there. But in my case, it'll be in Classic Boy. Just go to PlayStation. Go to ROMs, and you select whichever one that you want to. So you're thinking, okay, well, this is a game system, or this is a Android entertainment system. How am I going to be able to play my games? Well, what's pretty cool is that you can actually connect your Xbox One controller to this device and actually play your games. So if you do have an Xbox One, you're in luck because you can actually do it with this. So let me go ahead and let me show you all how to do that. I'm going to back out. Go to settings, then go down to where it says add an accessory. So since that I already have it connected, what you're going to do on your Xbox One controller is just hold down on the button to turn it on. In this case, it's going to turn on my Xbox, if y'all heard that, because I actually had it connected to that. But then you're going to press your sync and connect button for three seconds, and you'll see it start to flash really quick. So what that's going to do is that's going to put it in pairing mode. For you to actually be able to add it to this device so whenever you have it like that i'm going to disconnect mine and i'll show you all what you got to do oh just go back down go to add accessory you got to wait a little bit just for it to discover it Okay, well, there it is. So you just scroll over, or you would select it, obviously, to connect to it. My TV actually turned off, I don't know why, but whenever I have my Xbox turned on, my TV will recognize it and then turn off. It never does that, unless if it's the Xbox. So you just select it. And you'll see that it says paired. Well, up on the Xbox One controller, you could you could use it like a normal controller. So you just click the B button, you go back, and I am not using the remote anymore. So this is strictly the Xbox remote, as you can tell if you go into settings. And if I go down, which you can hear me playing with it, or me, that sounded so wrong. You can hear me going up and down on the dials. So you see how it says connected, Xbox One controller. So you just go back to where it says Classic Boy, open it up, you select Crash Bandicoot, and you see how it saved my game from previously. So let's go ahead and I'll open it up. It might be a little laggy right now because I'm doing a different screen recording. Just go to resume. But yeah, so obviously as you can tell, so I'm going to go back out of this. Exit. I'm going to go to Spyro. Go right here, open that up. Then go to resume game. Quick game. No. Just go to continue. So, so as you can tell on here, it is a little laggy, and I'm sorry about that. But it won't be that laggy on here, obviously, because you're playing it through the game system. 
and you're not going through another device to actually stream it. But as you can tell right here, I'll just let that sit there for a second just so y'all can be able to see that it actually does work and it runs very well. So that that's why I think that this is way better than that because you're only going to spend, what, $70, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. It depends on if you have an SD card or not. You don't have to get that big of an SD card. I would say at least a 16 gigabyte. So that'll run you about a couple bucks, maybe $8 or less. Um, but with that being said, you know, this is definitely a better alternative to um to the ps1 classic so if you like this video give it a thumbs up let me know uh if you have any questions or any comments leave it in the comments and as always thanks for watching like and subscribe